our plan today. End of summer, September 11th today. Somber day. Um, first cold fronts come through. Water's cooling off after a brutal August, and late early September. Major transition period for a lake. Fish go from stressing out and eating to fulfill me metabolic needs because it's ramped up because of water temperature to crap, I got winter coming up and I gotta lay down some lipids. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. So this is our first of two fall electrofishings for some of the program lakes. We're gonna get in, we're gonna do two or three or four electrofishing transects, get our hands on a bunch of fish, check out the condition of bass, and just as importantly, check out the densities of prey. Everything's at its peak, it should be at its peak abundance. So I should, I expect, I hope to see just clouds upon clouds of prey fish. This, this piece of equipment is essential for what we do. Um, as a fish biologist, we need to get our hands on fish. We need to collect a whole bunch of, a lot of data from the fish that we use to punch into indices, to monitor how the population's doing. There's a lot of math, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of decisions that are made based on what we think the fish are doing. The only way to get a good representative sample of what the fish are doing is to put an electrofishing boat in. This piece of equipment's designed to temporarily stun fish. We'll go through the whole system in a minute, but from a scientist, a biologist standpoint, this is how we get a random snapshot of what a population is doing at time. So we do this in this lake, where this will be our fifth time this year, and we'll have one more here in a month or so, just to keep track of what the population is doing. It gives us, catches everything from small fish to bait fish to big fish. Everybody wants the big fish, and they're exciting, but the more interesting data from a population standpoint is all those babies and see what they're doing. So it, it's just essential. We couldn't do our job without it. There is nothing cooler than being on the lake right now. But we'll go out, we always start off with just kind of checking the lake out. We'll go get some water samples. We'll check thermal stratification, see how the See how the lake's feeling. It's a good way to put it. So Katie's putting the anodes into the water. Think of that as the positive part of our electrical field that we're going to generate. So from the positive of the anodes to the negative of the, bo of the boat, we're going to form kind of an electrical field. And when a drive over and a fish gets into that field, they'll be temporarily stunned and Katie will net them and throw them in the live well tank here. Then they'll recover in this water temperature probably under a minute, if not sooner. How do we figure out where to shock, how much to shock, how long to shock? There's a very simple methodology that you follow, and it's the first thing you got to know is everything you catch is bias. So there, every, every gear, every weather factor inserts bias into the whole process. So to minimize that bias, there's a couple things we can do. The first one is to this is a 23 acre lake, we're gonna get three transects. So we'll have three replicates sampling this population. We're gonna do it in three different areas and we'll take the combination and the average of all those with the variability associated with it to run our metrics. All right, go ahead. We're shocking. Oh, it's like a cheeseburger for a bass. Yeah, right? that was a big fat shad. There's a bass. Holy. There's a big old There's fish like city. There's like six more in here. There's a fish city right under us. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
There's a fish city right off that point. They all rolled up out of that sucker. Whoa. Holy cow. Holy moly. That was a lot of bass in one spot. There's the food. A little skinny. They look good, but that's the part of this that never gets old. When you roll a bunch of fish like that, that many all in one spot, you still get excited. Is that 10 minutes already? Yep. Cool. That was fun. That was insane. I don't think I've ever seen that many fish come off of one fish city before. I get this all the time. This is the bane of being a biologist. I saw probably about 30 to 40% of them that are getting skinny. They weren't a month ago, so that tells me our prey is depleted. We'll have more food in here within the week. We'll bring that up, but you just hate to see it. There's some phenomenal fat fish in <laughs> There's there. There's a few good ones. Yeah, but our population's going down, so that tells me we need to, we will get culling really hard this fall, and I'll have more food in here by early next week. So this is what you're talking about. Yeah. You can see the, sucked in belly a little bit on this fish. I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's not, it doesn't look terrible, but, um, but it's a little, it could be plumper. We'd rather see it, you know, a nice round curvature sticking out. Six hundred and thirty grams. Gizzard shad. That's like a breaded chicken breast. <laughs> not Nine bony. Nine and a half inches. Full of oil, <laughs> greasy. 130. But oh, so good. Well, there's the belly this you want to nice. see. This is 16 and a quarter. Nice filled out belly. Show them the shoulders. If you look at it from that side, how thick it is. Yeah, shoulders, I guess, easiest to look at from the from the back, how it kind of widens out there. Good looking fish. Chunk. <laughs> There's a big girl. That is a fat <laughs> belly. I like that. So, mm, 17 and 3 quarters long. Three and a half pounds. Seventeen fifty. Seventeen fifty. That is a belly we like to see right there. Fatty. Small head, small tail. That's a young fish with a lot of years of growing left. Very healthy. Seventeen and a quarter. Do you want to wait on this one? Yeah. Thirteen thirty. So about the same length as that last fish, but almost a pound lighter. Hold that fish up. This is cool. That's a nice fish, but I'm way more excited about this fish because we know from our aging studies this guy's probably seven, eight years old and on its way out. This one is probably just finishing up its second year of life. It has about five or six years ahead of it. This fish will be bigger than that fish within a year. It will far surpass it, when it by the time it's the same age as that one. Seventeen inches. Run two. Go ahead. 
we go. There's a bass. Nice grab. Run number two. And that's why you do multiple runs. We caught half the fish we caught in the first run, so that variability is important. 